This video is going to walk you through how to do some basic styling with charts. Now when you get, when you get into charts in Excel, there's a hundred different ways you can tweak and modify and customize them. But for the exams, I'm going to focus on a couple of key elements I want you to be able to do. So looking at this chart down here, I kind of went all out on that. This is definitely an overstyled chart. But I'm trying to give you just a problem that you can play with to see if you can use up all the different options that we have available. So what we're going to do is go ahead and, and recreate this chart step by step and kind of showing you how to get all those options available so you can play with them on your own. So let's first start by creating the actual chart itself. We're going to grab the data, go to insert, and create the standard 2D column chart. Now if you notice this one, it is a clustered column because each line goes all the way from the bottom axis to the top. So now let's go ahead and start making our little sample here look like the picture we have on the left. So let's start from the top. We see that we have a larger caption. One of my pet peeves in presentations are people that use very, very small font in large rooms. So it's always a good practice is to go ahead and make these larger. So I'm going to type in my caption. Once I type it in, you want to go ahead and do formatting on it. Now for formatting, try not to get in the habit of selecting text. You could, if you want, go to home and make individual text larger or smaller, but it's a better idea just to format the entire thing instead. So I'm going to click off of it to stop the text input and then click back onto it. Once I click back onto this, now I'm going to go ahead and increase the font size to match what I have on the left. If you accidentally delete it, you can always get this back. Go to Chart Design, Add Chart Element, and under here you can see all the little elements and things you can add here. Everything from the axes, the titles, all the different options. So I'm going to go ahead and click the one that says Above Chart, and it'll add it on back for me. All right, let's do the next piece. Let's start with the axis on the left here. You see we have a little label on the left. Let's go ahead and add that element as well. So that's called an axis title. I can go ahead and add a vertical one, and now I have a word that I can stick inside of this. I'm going to type in profit in dollars. And then again, as with the other one, I'm going to click off of it to stop entering text, and then click back into it and make it larger. Next, let's format the axis labels. Those are the green numbers we have here. For making them green or larger, we're just going to go to the home ribbon again, use the font size increase, and then color to green. But now you notice I have a couple of differences in how they're being displayed. On the left, I can see the maximum is 4,000, while mine is only 3,500. Also, you see the zeros are shown differently as well. So how does this happen? Well, we need to do a little bit more formatting to make them look identical. We're going to double click. When you double click, you'll get this box on the right hand side that gives you some more options for playing with the axis. You can click around and see the, all the range of options, and there really are a ton of options here. But the ones that I want you to focus on are on the right. First, let's set the maximum. We want a maximum of 4,000, and we're currently on 3,500. So we'll go to where it says 3,500 and change it to 4,000. Now I can see that my maximum is set to 4,000, not 3,500. The th second thing we're going to want to do is change the interval. Right now I'm using an interval of every 500. But on this one I want an interval of every 1000. So I'll go to where it says units and change it to 1000. Now you can see I have the same large gaps on the right that I do on the left. The last step is zero. Now if you remember there's two different ways to format a number inside of Excel so it shows with a dollar sign. One option is currency and one is accounting. By default, you're probably using accounting in most of your spreadsheet, but in accounting, zero is shown as a hyphen. Well, we don't want that, so we want to actually have a zero there. So we're going to change this format away from accounting and into currency. See where it says number and currency? The other thing to be careful of is decimal points. Often Excel will default to showing two decimal points on this, which is just kind of pointless. So it's a good habit to get into to go ahead and change it down to zero to get rid of them. All right, so now the axis looks similar on the left and on the right. Let's change the horizontal information. 
First thing you'll see is on the left hand side we actually have a full table. Now you don't really need this most of the time, but occasionally in some circumstances you want to give the exact number for something. So we'll come over here to chart design and add element and we're going to go ahead and add a data table. So now you can see I've got a little table below it just like I do on the left. Now the font's still a little on the small side so we'll just click to select the data table and make the font larger. I also see that I have a legend. If I don't want a legend, I can just click on it and delete. Or always go back up to chart design, add chart element, and turn on or off the different options under legend. All right, next as I look through, I've got some pretty good information going here. This stuff looks like it's matching the formatting for over here. The major difference now are the bars. Now, you can use the format built-in options inside of your, your uh, chart to do this manually, or you can use some of the built-in ones, things like change colors, or the, all the styling you have in these pre-made things here. For this class, though, I want you to know how to specifically format an individual bar. So get used to be able to use these options right here. These select the fill and the line or border for these boxes. Let's do the first one. I'm going to click once to select the series of red data here. Go up to fill and change it to the light red. Now that's done, I'm going to go to the next one and choose green. The next one and choose purple. And the last one and do blue. All right, now that I have all of them selected, sometimes I'll want to select just a single bar. So rather than all the red ones, here, 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 I might want one in particular to stand out. So say for example, I want to select this one. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to click once to select the day's series, in other words, all the blues, and a second time to just have that one individual bar selected. Now that I have one bar selected, I can now do this one different from the other ones that are around there. Sorry, my screen's a little bit slow and refreshing here. Okay, so now I see I have this black now is different from all the other ones that are around there. So it's a handy kind of trick that you may not know about, but the key is to click on it once to select the data series. See how the purples are selected? And then a second time to just get the individual bar. Now the last formatting we have on the bars are the outline. We go to the format, go to the outline button on the toolbar, and we're gonna choose black. Now usually you have to also modify the weight a little bit or it's too hard to see it. So we'll do a larger weight and then we'll do a color black. Now we have a thin one. I think I want to make it a little bit thicker. So I'll go back to weight and change it up to like a three point. Now it looks more similar to the one that I have on the left. Now the next formatting I have on here is a label. It's called a data label. So again, I'm going to click on that data series to select all of these blue ones. Go to chart design, add chart element, and add data labels. And there's a couple different places you can put things. I usually do the one that is outside end. If one of these are a little bit off, like say this 200 is kind of overlapping there, you also can click on them individually and move it out of the way a little bit just to make it fit better. You can also do all the normal formatting on this, like making it bigger or changing the dollar format as well. Now the last thing that I like to do on this kind of deal is have a highlight this helps you remember what you want to talk about, as well as makes it easier for users that tend to zone out occasionally. We're going to go ahead and go to Insert, and we're going to do a shape. The cool thing about shapes is that it's actually not part of the chart at all. You don't have to mess with any chart settings. Instead, just grab a block arrow, point in the right direction, and once you have it, click on it, and now my cursor's changed. If you look closely, you'll see I have a little square uh, kind of a compass-like thing instead of my cursor. Now I can click and drag and I'm going to make a box of whatever shape, size, and orientation that I pull my mouse into. Now that I have it, select, have it there, I'm going to do things like turn it a little bit, change it to be black. If there's a border, take off the border. And then add text by right-clicking and edit text.
Now with the text, you'll see it looks a little bit different. So you might want to do something like go back to the home ribbon, centering, and making larger as well. Okay, so this should have walked you through all the basic skills I want you to be able to reproduce for a chart in Excel. Take a minute and try and recreate the one on top on your own, as well as the one a little bit lower down too.